This is a general tutorial and overview of how crappy I am about using my webcam to show this. Uh, this is a overview and assembly instruction, I guess, of my, well, this one's currently a prototype, a uh, slam fire kit for the Nerf Calvern. This is a U Calvern, full, full length U Calvern in this case. And it slam fires. As you can see, I can still pull the normal trigger and let off, you know, normal shots. But I can also hold down this trigger. Slimfire. It gets a little bit crunchy if you try to do it slowly for the camera, but if you, you know, you briskly, uh, bop, bop, easy peasy. So this is how it works. It has a secondary catch right here that is held down by a rubber band instead of a spring, like in the standard grip. So this is a rubber band, and it goes all the way around. I have it doubled up for enough strength to reliably hold this back. It is connected. This entire black bit is new. This bit is modified to have space for the second catch. This bit is modified for a lever right there that gets activated when the RAM base goes fully into battery in the front. Uh, there you go, you can kind of see it if I try to do it slowly. There you go. Um, the trigger is held in with two screws, one on each side, like that. Or the activation arm trigger thing. The catch is held in with a spacer to you know, for it to pivot on, and one screw on the top. Because if you tried to screw it in from both sides, the, the screw on this side just keeps falling out. So, just don't put that one in, I guess. And then, you got a nice little thing there. I'll probably update the file for this spacer to have a um, cross pattern on one side. Because the way that I've been tightening and loosening this spacer during assembly and reassembly is I jam a screwdriver in from that side against friction and then unscrew it from this side with a different screwdriver. And I think that's still how I'm going to do it, but right now it's just jamming into a hole and kind of ovaling it out over time. But once there's a cross pattern in that, it should hold up better. And if it gets gummed up, it's an easy print and takes like, it takes like 10 minutes to print. It's very small. Very small. It's like that big. Um, I guess we can do this assembly. One second. I'm gonna mute this because I recorded this three times already. One time I for one fi one time I forgot to hit the record button. Second time I got notifications during it, and the third time I messed up halfway through. So hopefully last time. Okay. So you want to disassemble the back. On the U Calibern, this is four screws. There we go. So I did all the design work on this mod. Uh, Taffy on the Rnerf Discord has designed a similar version at the same time as I did because this came up in a conversation that we were having, this idea, and he came up with a slightly cleaner version, I suppose. Like, it's harder to see it from the outside, but this version is simpler, which is why I was able to print it before he has even printed his, or even finished designing his, and it uses a standard Calburn catch, which is, at the moment, doesn't. So this is a standard Calburn catch. And, you know, 
simple and easy. Uh, so back butt comes off. Sproing comes out. Spacer comes out. And then you can kind of squiggle the rubber band off of that. Uh, this uses a rubber band to catch instead of a spring because the rubber band allows it to be like closer to the rest of the thing. There's no sticky outy bar for a spring to have enough tension. Uh, it's easier to replace if it breaks and you can tune it for different spring loads. So if you're running something super light, you can put a lighter rubber band on it. If you're running something like a K14, sometimes one rubber band won't be enough, sometimes you'll put two. But who's slim firing a K14? I mean, I tested it with a K14 as like a trauma test and it worked, but no one's slim firing that. Anyway, we can take out the two screws of the coupler print right there. Bada bing, bada boop. And then this entire thing, why isn't it coming off? Ah, I forgot to unscrew the trigger, this bit. This bit needs to come off before you take off this entire bit because it goes in front of this bit if you try to take this off, it'll just jam into the front of it. I guess that you can kind of like lift it up and kind of squiggle it over that, but it's sketchy. So you should just take out this screw and that screw and hold it in. And I'll show that during reassembly. Uh, yep. So that's all they that need to do for the front end. The only two, well, there's six prints in this right now as of 4.26.21. Uh, it is the the arm right there, the body that it all sits in, the catch, which is a standard caliber and catch, but it's a print, the spacer for the catch, I previously discussed, a new, uh, this is the coupler print on the caliber U. It's called different crap on different things. It's the Kiri print on, on, um, Town claws, but this is new. It's the same one as normal, but it just has a slot cut out for extra space for this thing. I didn't actually print this new since this is, you know, the prototype. I hacked this out with a hacksaw. And then same thing for whatever the front magwell bit is on the individual design. So on normal Calburns. This doesn't touch the million, million, whatever the heck it's called, the the coupler bit. It doesn't touch that. It only touches the front part of that, I suppose. On the Calburn U, that's all one part, so you need to replace that. And what you do, well, what I did for this test version is I took a hacksaw and I just kind of, you know, cut a space in it enough and then cleaned it up with a uh, flush cutters. Um, so that has space now for the, oh crap, laundry tube comes out since there's no back coupler on this right now. There we go, I'll hold that in place. Uh, that makes space for the RAM base to not poke out the front but for the arm to have space to hit the RAM base when it comes fully forwards. So, this bit's changed. This bit's changed, this red one. So, coupler, magback, both changed on the u Galvern design. No change to the plunger, no change to the RAM base, no change to the rest of it at all. This also doesn't change the spring weight. So this will perform the same as whatever spring you stick in it. This is a 788. If I stick my K14 into it, I can slam fire and it will hit 340 something, whatever it was, when I tried it out with K14. But doesn't change FPS. All it is is a second catch. Doesn't mess with the seals. 
doesn't mess with the barrel length. Nothing. If anything, like, the only hard, like, hitch that you'll notice is it will be slightly harder to prime once it reaches the catch, because instead of going over one catch, it's going over two catches. But that's it. It's, it's not a... It's not super noticeable. It's only noticeable if you're kind of going real slow and just... Because you'll notice the little hitch. Anyway. This is the part. Trigger goes on top of that. This is the part. It pushes down when... when oh, wait. No, I'm not holding this correctly. There you go. This is the part. That is the trigger arm. And when the ram base hits it here, forwards, it pushes that down, which lifts up that. And if you need to, I'll, I'll cover depriming later, but if you need to deprime, you can uh, push this down to release that, then put the ram base, or uh, you can push this down with the same grip as the firing grip. You can just kind of reach up. Grab this, it would be like that. Grab that down, it will release this, and then you can pull the trigger and then let it go slowly forwards. Or you can, if you tune it correctly, you can fully prime it, push it forwards to release the ram base, and then it will kind of kick up out of the plunger tube, but still hold on the back one, on the on the normal catch. And then you can bring the whole thing back, and then deprime like normal. This doesn't mess with normal shooting. It's it's perfectly normal. The the firing, you can still do non-slam-fired firing. Doesn't change it. Because it doesn't even go close to touching the entire lower thing. It catches on the top side of the plunger as opposed to the bottom middle. Uh, let's go ahead and disassemble this. There we go. Uh, this uses the shorter piece of threaded rod that comes in the current caliber new parts kit. I think that's the shorter piece. Is it the shorter piece? Yeah, it's the shorter piece. Shorter piece of threaded rod. And I think that's the bit that goes from the grip to the buttstock thing. Not sure, but I think that's it. Anyway, it came with the parts kit, which is nice. And then after that, the back coupler can come off. You can clearly see the giant slot cut out of it. Uh, this is more minimal cutting on the final files, but hacksaw, you get hacksaw results. 3D printing, you get 3D printing results. Uh, this is the mechanism. So this goes this, this goes forwards, this goes up, like that. And this is a completely normal Galburn catchy thing. On the Talonclaw version, it is a new print, but that new print uh, is the same size as the normal catch, it just has a little notch for the rubber band to sit in and not slide off. On the current talon claw, it's completely smooth. Or on the normal talon claw files, it's completely smooth. On the modified one for this kit, it has a divot for the rubber band to sit in so it doesn't slide off. Anyway, if we want to fully disassemble this, we can get both sides of the trigger, unscrew about halfway, there we go, and then this comes off. Let's cover this. This is a fully new 3D printed part, oh, there we are. Uh, let's try and get that slightly more focused, yeah there we go, that's good enough. Uh, fully new 3D printed part, you can see that bit hits the catch. This bit is where it pivots. This is nice and reinforced. It is slightly tapered 
Instead of all being the same thickness, it tapers towards the bit where it hits the RAM base. I don't know if I'm going to change that in the final version. I might, but it shouldn't cause any, you know, issues. Um, this uses a piece of PVC or polycarb or Lexan or whatever that you stick into the hole that is going up and down like this in the print. So you drill a hole in the PVC or whatever, and then you stick a screw through it, then you screw that into the trigger. And that allows you to change the distance that it activates the on the RAM base. Do I have more than one RAM base printed? Yes, I do. Here it is. So, for example, uh, on this RAM base, the red one, it is slightly tapered along the edges. This is a reinforced one from Thingiverse, but I didn't really notice in what way it was reinforced. It's really not. So I made this one, which is properly reinforced. Um, on this one, it's just a normal caliber and RAM base uh, lengthened a bit and then double O-ring space without making them squish. Anyway, um, on this one, since it's not tapered, since it's not tapered, when the piece of whatever you have on the arm hits the front, it has space there to hit it. So this would be with a shorter piece of polycarb. On this one, where it hits on the corner, there's it's lower down. So this would have a longer piece of polycarb or a PVC or whatever. Uh, the PVC can just be cut out of a piece of... Uh, pipe. You just cut it out with a piece of flush cutting shears. Boop, boop. Drill a hole in it. Easy peasy. Let's get those out of here. Uh, back to this. So this is the rest of the part. Uh, as I mentioned, to disassemble it in the testing phase, I've just been jamming this screwdriver into the back and unscrewing it like that. And it appears that that's completely stripped now because, you know, that's not a proper way to do it. It's, it's a test bed. Um, but in final version, you'll stick a screwdriver in from this side and then screw it in from that side. The screw that is facing the top of the blaster is the one that goes in. The one facing the bottom is the one that always falls out due to the direction that this is rotating or something. So, whatever. If it if if you put it in and the screw falls out sometimes, switch them around and then you'll be fine. So the back only has one screw. Trigger has two screws, one from each side. This only one screw and the spacer on that screw, which this pivots on. I think that's it. Um, this has two little tabs, right? Oh, can I show that? Yeah, two little tabs, one right there and one right there, that kind of latch over the pick rail on this. So it kind of latches like Oh, which way would it go? It would go that way. Kind of latches over that bit. And that's not completely necessary, but, you know, it's nice. I might remove that in the final version. So, if you download the files and it's not there, well, there you go. Um, but that should be fine. And then it uses the shorter piece of threaded rod right there. A nice little nut on it. Goes like that. Easy peasy. So for assembly, you would take this body print and you would put the catch in it with the spacer inside of the catch. You align the catch to the holes there and there. 
you put in the one screw while holding in it on that side. So it would be something like that. Or once you have them, you know, held properly, you can kind of do a that kind of thing. Holding it like that with one screwdriver in each hand and kind of twisting. Um, once that's in, then you put in the two screws for the trigger. Oh, all right there. One there, one there. And then you put them in halfway. And then you line up the trigger with them. And then you put them in all the way. Uh, when you're disassembling, if you don't want to take the entire butt off and everything, you... Okay, let me rephrase that. If you don't want to mess with the front end, and you can't bend the trigger up and over it to pull it out, like I did at the beginning, you unscrew these two screws, take this out, then disassemble the rest. To, you don't need to disassemble it to put in a new spring. It doesn't mess with that at all. So it's still just as capable of quick spring replacements. Anyway, so let's do that. I kind of mostly tighten it, kind of spot it. Sorry that I can't get you a good view of this, because crappy webcam, and I'm not used to recording stuff on a desk. There we go. So you tighten in both sides until they're snug, like that. Don't want to strip the 3D printed thread crab. Uh, you want to make sure that the trigger arm is on top of the catch. If you have it like that, with the catch on top of the trigger, it won't work. It won't even let you assemble it, but... Actually, will it? It might let you assemble it, but it would be sketchy, so don't do that. Um, you need to have the trigger on top of the thing so it makes a proper lever. After that, you put the threaded rod on with a nut slightly on. Uh, nut goes on the side with the trigger arm. So then you have this whole assembly with a nut up here. Like that. You take your caliber and you kind of you, you put the nut that you pre-threaded on into the little nut hole that's on the magpic print, then you kind of squish the trigger over it. You might need to slightly prime the ram base. You put the trigger on, um, or you put the trigger bar over that while the ram base is back slightly. I think that's it. Um, yeah, I, I was checking to make sure that, I, I, whatever. Um, this bit, this is the big hole. This is the normal bottom, this is the, there we go, this is the normal bottom of it, the big open end goes towards the barrel side, so you kind of slide that on, like that, you put the nut on the back of the threaded rod, which should stick through the back of the uh, coupler, spin it till it's tight, or mostly tight, spin it till it's like kind of tight, then put in the screws for this, for the uh, coupler. Like so. Then we can tighten this the rest of the way. And the uh, nut is held in this bit, so you can tighten this one. Okay. Uh, a note about tightening this nut. You want a flat piece of it to be flat with the top side of the pick rail and the bottom side facing the plunger. Like... Oh. That is very bright. There you go. Flat like that. Because if it has the point 
pointing towards the plunger, then you can't kind of cram this under it. Uh, but if you do it correctly, you can hook the spacer, stock spacer thing, under the nut, lift it up and into the back of the coupler. And then from there, it's normally just kind of schlong your spring in there. Put the back button on. Bada bing, bada boom. Uh, this is a spring that is has a tiny bit of pre-compression when putting it in. This is a full length 78, 788, so you need to hold in the butt when screwing it in. Yep. Just like that. And then from this point, you're almost done. As you can see, this is now mostly fully assembled. This is over the magvac print. So you can see that as I let that go, doesn't have the rubber band on it yet. There you go. You can see that this one, this goes forwards and pushes that up like that. Uh, from there, you can put your rubber band over the back catch, hooking it into whatever notch is there in your particular design. So if it's a talon claw, it will have one notch. If it's a caliburn, it will have a crap load of notches, unless slug changes the standard files. So, you know. Stick it in whichever one you feel like. Uh, I double up this particular rubber band, but rubber bands are different. They have different strengths. Do whatever works for you. Uh, if your rubber band doesn't, like, like if you can't stretch it out without snapping it over the butt, you can put on your rubber band before you put on the butt, before you put on the spacer. So after you tighten the nut that keeps the saw in place before you put on the spacer, before you put on the butt, you would put on your rubber band. On this one, unless it decides to break while I'm recording it, uh, it should be fine. Yeah. There we go. Like that. Uh, this rubber band does go over the bottom catch as well doesn't mess with it, it makes it catch a little bit stronger, and sometimes um, if you don't have it going over the bottom one, or, there you go, if you don't have it going over the bottom one, sometimes if you, if you don't tune it correctly, aka messing with it until it does work, um, you can fully prime it and then pull the trigger. And when you release the trigger down here without slam firing, so it's fully back and you're just kind of messing around, um, if you release it, it won't fully go back into the catch of the plunger tube, and you'll need to kind of jolt this back a little bit. Just squish it back a little bit, before, and then it will pop back in. But if you do have this rubber band, sometimes you can just, you know, do that while it's fully primed, and it'll not cause any problems. Uh... I think that's everything. So, like that, you can see that goes forwards, and you can still single shot like that. Doesn't mess with single firing at all. But if you hold down the trigger, you prime it, it catches on this catch instead of this catch, and when the ram base goes forwards and lifts up the trigger, fires. Like so. Ooh. Yeah, see, in that case, I had put it completely forwards, but not hit the forward stroke hard enough to release the back. So once I do that, now it will fire.
like that. And that's what I was saying would happen if you don't tune it correctly. Since I disassembled this, I'll have to retune it. But um, if you tune it correctly, you can prime it back, push it forwards most of the way, and then kind of do this while it's still back, and it will go back into catch. But since I haven't done that on this, I haven't done the redone the tuning, if you do that, it will stay unprimed or uncatched down here in the top one, the slam fire one will be the only one holding it back. So when you go for it, it'll go like that. So that's it. How long was this? 30 minutes. Jeez. Uh it's kinda longer than it had to be, but I don't know. I don't really feel like editing this. Yeah. I'll just upload it. Um, I'll probably upload a cleaner assembly video and written guide later, but later is not now, so I will now upload this. Cool. Hope you enjoyed. Well, enjoyed as much as you can a crappy webcam video on a crappy view of the thing that you may or may not even be interested in. Yeah.